Hello, welcome to today's movie. In today's movie, we're going to look at some time series data and we're going to fit a decomposition model to that time series data. And in this movie, we're going to be using Excel. So if we go to the Excel solution, you can see that what we're dealing with here is the quarterly index for US consumer energy products with 2012 with an index of 100. So you can see in 2015, quarter one, the quarterly index was 120.2. In quarter two, it was 90.6. In quarter three, it was 101.8 and so on, including the last two quarters, sorry, the first two quarters of 2020. Now, what we're going to do is fit a decomposition model. And remember, and we're going to use a multiplication model. So the data value, the series value Y is modeled using the trend multiplied by the seasonal component, multiplied by the regular component. Remember, that's the random term multiplied by the cyclical component. Now, we're not going to look at the cyclical in this Excel example. We're just going to use the model. The series value is modeled by the trend times the seasonal component times the irregular component. So there's our data series there. And these are our time points. So the first thing to do is we wish to fit a trend. Now, in this example, using Excel, I'm modeling the trend using the Excel trend line function. So you can see there that in this cell, we're going to use Excel trend function D4 to D25. Well, that's, remember, is your uh, series values, your Y values. C4 to C25 is your time point values. And the first value we want to calculate for is time point 1 C4. Then all we have to do then is copy the formula down to the end. So you can see that for time for 2015, quarter 1, time point 1, the series value is 120.2. The trend value would be 104.6. So it's slightly less than that. For time point uh, year 2020, quarter one, time point 21, the series value is 116.8, but the trend value is 106.7. Now, all, you, you could use a different method to calculate the trend values at each time point. Now, you could use a moving average method, etc. Okay, but we've just fitted a trend line using regression analysis. Okay, so what we want to do then is, we know trend, so now we want to be able to estimate seasonal times irregular component, SI. And to do that, we take the series value and divide through by T. Okay, so we take the series value, that, divide by that, gives me that. That, divided by that, gives me that. And we copy that formula down to the end, as you can see there. Now, what we want to do now is we want to be able to estimate the seasonal component S. And to do that, we need to average out the regular component I. Now, what we do is there's my summary table there. So you can see that we have the SI values from here substituted into this table here. So for quarter one, 2015, it was 1.1. Four nine. There we are. So for quarter uh, quarter two, it was point eight six five. There we are. For quarter three, it was not point nine seven one. Look, we're just going down the list. And then for twenty sixteen, there are your values there. For twenty seventeen, there are your values there, and so on to create the table. Now what I've done then is I've just copied this table down here, and I've highlighted because what we want to do is. For each quarter, one, we want to calculate the average for those quarter one SI values. And what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the I component by taking the average, but re removing the smallest value, which was uh, 1.091, and the largest value, which is 1.184. So you can see there that the average per quarter is that plus that plus that plus that divided through by four because we've got four numbers in the average, yeah, which is that equation there. 
then we repeat it for quarter to two. So you can see that the smallest value is that, the largest value is that. So we want to average that plus that plus that plus that. And then we continue the process for the others. So what we have is we have an average per quarter where we've averaged out the irregular component, which just leaves the seasonal component element. If we add those numbers up there, we find it's 4.0003. It should be 4 exact. That enables us to provide a scaling factor. So the scaling factor is the number it should be 4 divided by this sum value there, which is 0 0.999918, etc. Then we can then use that scaling factor to tell us what the seasonal component factor should be. So the seasonal component factor should be, so for se uh, quarter one, it's that number times that. For quarter two, it's that number times that. For quarter three, it's that number times that. And for quarter four, it's that number times that. So those are the seasonal components. So for quarter one, the seasonal component is 1.13. For quarter two, the seasonal component is 0 0.874, etc. For quarter three, 0 0.976. Remember, these are just written to three decimal places. Uh, and then quarter four, the seasonal component is 1.020. So these then are copied to there. And then those values are copied to there. Can you see the pattern? There. And there. And there. And then... That's a quarter one, which is just that, and that's a quarter two, which is just that. Then once we've done that, then the model fit using this model that we just created, y at, is the trend value multiplied by the seasonal component. So that there is the trend value, that times that gives me that, and that is your model fit. Then repeat it for the next time point. It's that times that gives me that. So we copy all the values down, those are the model fit to this series data using this decomposition model that we've created. Now, what we can do is we could plot the values, these values onto a graph. So if I highlight the data set there, okay, and then if I go to insert and then go to the line graph and choose that option. So that shows me how the series, original series varies with time. So the vertical axis is the series value, the y values there. The horizontal axis is the time point, and the blue line shows me how that series changes. Now what I could do now is I could now fit the trend line by just highlighting the trend values, right click, copy, and then right click on the graph and paste. So there's my trend line values, and then I could do exactly the same for the model fit. So I like your model numbers, copy, click on the graph, and then, so just click on the graph and then paste. So there's my model fit to the actual data set. In the next movie, what we'll do is we'll use SPSS to solve the same problem. But with SPSS, it uses it's a slightly different method to estimate the trend etc. But we'll come on to that in the next movie. So bye for now.